Yeah, and it's really been nationwide. I mean, I know on the East Coast here, I spoke to my mailman uh, the day after Gwyn died, and, and he brought him up as well. And it's rare when you see someone who is that good on the field to really be remembered more as a person because he was such a great hitter, one of the best I've ever seen. And, and, and you know, yeah. anybody who's ever watched baseball, even if they did see the greats years ago, the Ted Williamses and whatnot, uh, still yeah. one of the best out there, yet they still just talk about him as a guy. I mean, my mailman said, to yeah. me, hey, you know, I went to the All Star game and I sat down and he was doing a thing for kids and I, and I quickly jumped and asked him a question and he and he talked to him for ten fifteen minutes and you know just that kind yeah. of guy you saw that with him coaching at San Diego State as Aztec players saying the same thing so surely will be uh, missed no doubt but again Michelle thank you so much for what you're doing uh, fighting the fight oh, every day you. we're gonna keep following you on Breitbart of course and uh, thanks for being here with us thanks so much for having me it's great. To check out Michelle's column, visit Breitbart.com slash columnists slash Michelle hyphen moons. This past week, Sarah Palin congratulated some GOP primary winners, including Palin-endorsed congressional candidate Dan Bongino in Maryland and Elise Stefanik, who's running for Congress in New York. Palin said at 29, she may become the youngest woman to serve in Congress. I look forward to supporting these GOP victors as we send a conservative majority to Washington this fall, putting a stop to what we can only expect to be the lamest of lame duck years from Barack Obama. Palin also called out the hocus pocus going on in Mississippi, where Democrats crossed party lines in massive numbers to put an ancient Washington insider over the top in the U.S. Senate primary against Chris McDaniel. Palin saying there were several potentially illegal political games afoot in Mississippi to motivate Democrat voters to switch over to the GOP for a day to help save a 42-year member of Congress. On top of that, millions of dollars from out-of-state liberal billionaires like Mike Bloomberg poured in at the last minute. Now, there is some good news. McDaniel is not rolling over. Instead, he's exposing the illegal activity, so stay tuned. To see any of the governor's posts in their entirety, visit Sarah Palin's Facebook page and follow her on Twitter at Sarah Palin USA. Now it's time to strap in with the colonel. Here's our friend Colonel Rob Manus. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Our campaign to take the Louisiana Senate seat back from the political class for the people gained new waves of momentum this week with our announcement that supporters like you have donated over $1 million and that Governor Sarah Palin has produced a new radio ad for our campaign. Mary Landrieu continued to show voters how out of touch she is and why she should not be reelected by funneling a new federal contract to build ships to one of her largest campaign contributors. President Obama had proposed authorizing a smaller contract for the ships, but Landrieu triples the scale, and this just weeks after the company's owner appeared in a campaign commercial on her behalf. The arrogance these folks display after years in Washington still shocks me sometimes. Meanwhile, my establishment Republican opponent had his pro-amnesty immigration policies and voting record exposed. As a result, he scrambled to co-sponsor two pro-American immigration bills that were each over a year old and which he had shown no interest in before. His campaign even sent out an email claiming that he was a member of the Border Security Caucus in Congress, even though his congressional website made no mention of it. These are the kind of D.C. shenanigans that Americans are tired of. Crony capitalist paybacks with our tax dollars and deceptive efforts to hide unpopular votes and political positions from the very people a public servant should be accountable to. That's why we need one of us to take this seat. I hope you'll join us in this effort. Find us on Facebook and at RobManus.com. This is Colonel Rob Manus with Mama Grizzly Radio. Join us again next week for another segment of Strappin' with the Colonel featuring Rob Manus on Mama Grizzly Radio. For more on Colonel Manus, head to robmanus.com. That's R-O-B-M-A-N-E-S-S dot com. It's time for Commonwealth Common Sense with Susan Stimson and Kevin Shola. Hello, Susan. How you doing? Kevin doing great. That week seemed to go by very fast. (laughs) <laughs> Always does, especially the summer before you know it'll be September, but let's pretend I didn't say that. That's right. Uh, what's happening? Well, this week I think that we have seen some tremendous decisions coming out of the Supreme Court, and I've been particularly struck 
just reading the opinions after the fact when the Supreme Court ruled unanimously that President Obama had overreached in doing a quote-unquote recess appointment when the Senate really was not in recess. I think that finally, finally, it does seem as if maybe Congress is going to get some legs beneath them and do what they need to do to push back and to defend the constitutional authority that that they have, that this is not uh, an emperor that we have ruling our country, but it's a president, and there's an actual an actual check on his power. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? You would think that if you know the basics of our Constitution and the basics of how our country is supposed to be run, you would think that we would know the decisions from the Supreme Court ahead of time pretty much, unless it's a real intricate situation. But, you know, going in, you just never know. Look at Roberts that time with Obamacare. Well, and that's another decision that we're waiting on right now is the Hobby Lobby decision where the Supreme Court is going to have to make a ruling on Obamacare and can they mandate that companies provide birth control which goes against their uh, religious belief, you know, that they should have to do that. So I think that we can probably expect Justice Roberts to do another clever maneuver. Not quite sure how he'll do it. He'll probably narrow the scope of his ruling, but we are seeing the courts now, they are just becoming uh, much more of a power player in this check and balance. And, and the main reason is we have a president like none other, uh, what President Obama has done with his overreach. And it does have, have an impact overall on our nation and, and the different decisions that are being made at, at the top level. You mentioned Hobby Lobby. Of course, uh, Bristol Palin was very outspoken regarding Hobby Lobby, asking folks to support them. I don't have one near me, so unfortunately I wasn't able to at the time. But, you know, I did see one of their trucks the other day go by me on the highway, and I I, I beeped at the guy and gave him a big thumbs up. He probably... (laughs) I had not known what the heck it was all about, but I was excited to see a Hobby Lobby uh, truck in, in my neck of the woods. And I think it's important in situations like that to to support those uh, who are standing up, not only you know for the Constitution, for their rights, for common sense. Well, I think that that what we're seeing here that the average American understands and they get that you should not be forced to do something against your will if you if you have a business that the government really should not be forcing you, especially to provide something that goes against your religious beliefs. So I I think that hopefully we're seeing a a line finally being drawn in the sand, and it's not just a rhetorical line in the sand, but the courts are weighing in now, and I do think that that's going to have tremendous impact nationwide. Well, it's like you said, this is a president like no other. We haven't had to go to these measures before because it was always understood about branches of government. Now this usurping, these executive orders, this brazenness of, hey, I'm going to take out my pen you know, all the time about if they say no, we'll still do it. That's like you mentioned just a moment ago, emperor talk. That's right. And we do say that this is common sense in the Commonwealth. And we're having the same issue here in Virginia, where the governor is making threats that he can unilaterally expand Medicaid when the General Assembly just passed a measure that specifically said that he may not do it without an appropriation that is approved by the General Assembly. So it is having ripple effects throughout the states. And we're certainly feeling it here in Virginia, and the Republicans are definitely pushing back hard against the executive, the governor, who is saying that he has unilateral power. Well, as Governor Palin has been saying, if things shake out okay in the Senate and Congress, this will be the lamest of lame ducks in the White House. So hopefully we'll be uh, reading to kids, you know, the emperor has no power. I think that we are all looking forward to the time when President Obama's term is up as president, but hopefully we are going to elect someone who will respect the rule of law and have an ample respect for the separation of powers. But don't worry, Susan, he already said he's not going to Hawaii, he's not going to Chicago, he's staying in Washington, so just in case we need him, you know, the job he's done in his two terms, you know, the next president will have him there if you need to call him in. Oh, my goodness. I can't even imagine what that would bring. But let's just not even think about it. (laughs) Susan, thanks so much, and happy Independence Day. Thank you, Kevin. You too.
Susan Stimson in Virginia. More Commonwealth Common Sense next week. Now our weekly commentary, Steel Resolve. Here's Sarah Steelman. Thanks, Kevin. It seems proper that the week of July 4th, as we celebrate our country's freedom, we recognize and be thankful that the Supreme Court showed respect for our Constitution this week. Isn't it amazing that despite how dysfunctional government may appear, the Founding Fathers were able to design a document 227 years ago that continues to protect our freedoms today? The Constitution is clear. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. The founders had firsthand knowledge of how dangerous the absolute power of the British government was to search their homes and persons with what they called a general writ of assistance. It was unrestricted in its nature. The drafters of the Bill of Rights knew that certain precautions and prohibitions had to be in place to ensure a general writ of assistance could never be used and abused by government again. The Supreme Court ruled that cell phones and smartphones can't be seized and searched by the police without a warrant. It was a unanimous decision. This 4th of July, be sure and set off some firecrackers and salute at this decision and celebrate a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. This is Sarah Steelman for Mama Grizzly Radio. Tune in again next week for another segment of Steel Resolve right here on the Palin Update. The Palin Update, including Strapping with the Colonel, Commonwealth Common Sense, and Steel Resolve, is on demand and available for download. So just head to mamagrizzlyradio.com, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Visit mamagrizzlyradio.com for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. Also, like Mama Grizzly Radio on Facebook. And follow along on Twitter at Mama Grizz Radio, at Kevin Schultz. Jola, at Rob Manus, at Susan B. Stimson, and at Sarah underscore Steelman. And I'm doing some writing for Breitbart News. Go to Breitbart.com and search Kevin Shola. I want to thank Sarah Steelman, Susan Stimson, Rob Manus, and everyone here at Mama Grizzly Radio. Thanks to Michelle Moons, and thank you for listening today. Please be sure to join us again next time for another edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola.